everyone, my name's Emma. Today we are talking about the documentary called Death by Design. When it comes to choices and decisions, the ones that we make every single day will help us create the world that we want to live in. That's what we talk about here on this channel. How can we take our power back every single day through every single choice that we make? Death by Design chronicles the truth about our technology, our electronics, where it comes from, how it affects people from beginning to end, how it affects us when we have it, and how planned obsolescence has caused the overturn of cell phones every two years. Now, very few people know what's in their cell phones or their computers or their tablets or their TVs, any other piece of technology that they own, but most of us own quite a few things and quite a few pieces of technology that hold so much in them that we have no idea where it comes from, how it affects us, how it affected the people that made it, and how it's going to affect people after it leaves us. Death by Design first started out with asking people how many pieces of electronic do they actually have? And a lot of people are like, oh, I have like 10 different pieces in my house. Even I have quite a bit. And the thing is, we really don't know where it ends up. And every piece of technology that has ever existed, and this use of technology really started off again in the 50s, we can point a lot of things back to the 50s when things really started to change. And the thing is, is there's so much devastation and destruction when it comes to technology and so many resources used for every single piece that we're not aware of. It takes over 500 pounds of raw material to create an 8-ounce cell phone. And there are millions created every single year and millions that are thrown out, shipped back to places usually just a few miles down from the factories they were created to be mined for the different precious materials that are existent in the circuit boards. So what can we do with this information? Well, we can choose to buy technology that is going to last us longer or to understand that we don't need the latest edition of the iPhone or the Android or whatever piece of technology that you are getting, but also knowing the history of what is in our phones may make us less willing to just carry them around or be as free with how much we interact with them. And it did a great job. The documentary will, I'll post the trailer down below. I believe it's only a few dollars. It may be for free on Amazon. So if you have Amazon Prime, that would be awesome. But also it might just be a few dollars on YouTube. And I've talked about this before, but for me, spending just a few dollars on any documentary that really can change how you see the world is absolutely worth it. Even documentaries that are going to just shift your mindset about one thing just a little bit is always worth it to me. We spend so much time on things that don't actually help us. And if we were to spend just a little bit of time every day looking at things that are helping us, that would make this world an even better place. Death by Design starts off with showing how much electronics are used and then it goes into the very hard truths of how people are affected by these electronics. There is 75 million people in rural China that do not have access to clean water due to the fact of how many chemicals are consistently and constantly used and dumped into the waterways and burned into the air. They get into the soil. And I am reading Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. And in there, she says that poison used to be something that we handled with great care, with very little use of it. We would use it and be very sure of where it went. But now we are using chemicals and poison indiscriminately on land, water, people, and not really even caring about the side effects because it is allowing this idea of consumerism to grow, to create this economy that we are living on in, and now we are destroying the planet. The only one that we have to boost this economy and this consumerism at the end of the day isn't even making us happier. So I will be talking about Silent Spring quite a bit more in April when we do Activism April and how she was one of the most influential voices to kick off the environmental movement. And we're going to continue to talk about that at another point. But Death by Design 
really opened my eyes about how destructive technology is and that where Google is located right now is on top of a Superfund site where there's 300 years worth of chemicals seeped into the ground and every single year people have to be evacuated because of how many chemicals seep into the floors and it was just very eye-opening harsh facts that we aren't told about ever when you buy your cell phone nobody is usually like um there was thousands of chemicals put into this phone and we don't actually have any idea of how it affects people when the first personal computer was created in the 1970s there was a lot of people in the clean rooms where they were wearing protective equipment to handle the different pieces of technology that were very sensitive. And the thing is that when people are in these clean rooms, when they are wearing this equipment, it is not to protect them, it is to protect the equipment from contamination. So a great deal of people started to be working in these areas and then had a great deal of cancer start coming up due to the fact that all these chemicals were used in the pieces of equipment and the pieces of technology. And now personal computers are easily accessible and the waste of the stuff we no longer want to use or need ends up going back to the places it was shipped from to be searched for circuit boards for precious materials. And then it ends up on the streets of countries that very people, very few people even understand when I was in Ghana. Um, last year, there was just old TVs, you know, the huge TVs, there was just piles and piles of them all over the country. And Ghana is one of the top places that waste is sent. And one of the top places of child labor. So these beautiful places have now become the wasteland for clothes, for technology, for food waste. And we are consistently destroying resources left and right mining is a very big issue and there's a lot of children that are used in mining because their hands are so much smaller and they can fit into smaller spaces so your phone your piece your computer they all contain pieces of metal and precious resources that cannot be found easily they have to be mined in very destructive ways to the environment and to the people who have to mine them because they don't have any other options for jobs because these resources have been searched for by these companies they come in and they devastate the economy by providing these people just a little bit more money and they're forced to do this type of mining because all the other types of jobs that they had were removed because they weren't able to pay just that little bit more that these companies were willing and a lot of the times they will start to decrease the amount of money that they pay over time so now that the jobs they used to have have been eliminated they start to get paid even less than before there's a lot of human rights issues a lot of environmental destruction a lot of ocean destruction and devastation chemicals being dumped into the water into the land and then it gets moved into the air we are facing air pollution, soil pollution, water pollution at unprecedented rates because of how much we are dependent on having a new cell phone every few years. And it is a known fact that planned obsolescence has been inputted into phones, into computers, so that these materials actually wear out at a certain amount of time so that you are forced to buy this type of technology over and over again every few years and even sometimes if we choose to say use the same phone for three four years our phone may someday just not work at all you can't turn it on and you lose a lot of data that you've had stored on this phone so this planned obsolescence is actually destructive in a lot of different ways and to the person themselves if they're trying to actually use a phone for a longer time they have to make sure that their data is recorded somewhere where it can't just easily be destroyed. So the, you might be asking, how do we deal with that? And there's a lot of places that are just starting out that are making great strides and creating technology and pieces of equipment that are more durable, that they are more sustainable, that they are able to last longer. I will try to find some links to the ones that they talked about in the documentary and put them down below. 
and you might be interested in looking at them. There's also a lot of different ways where we can buy phones secondhand. So if somebody is like getting a new phone all the time, sometimes people throw away phones that are perfectly fine or they just want to get rid of them and they could be selling them for a lot cheaper price and that might also be a good way for us to look at things and I know that it's happened to me that a computer has completely been destroyed and I needed a new one the next day and I want to say that when you have to make decisions like that that you shouldn't be hard on yourself that this isn't necessarily our fault that the world functions like this this is the story we inherited but it is a story that we get to choose to change and whatever steps we can take are important instead of continuously buying cheap pieces of technology i used to buy headphones all the time because they would just break and i was like i don't want to spend a hundred dollars on more expensive headphones sometimes putting in a little bit more money right now can save you a lot of money in the long run and it, it can be hard to put that money down right away but there's different ways that we can approach this and I believe and will always believe that the first step is knowing about what's going on. Very few of us fully understand the extent to the destruction that is happening in the world and that isn't okay. We need to do better. We need to work on creating this knowledge in our own lives, in our own communities of what's happening so that we can do something about it. Can't know something, can't do something unless you know something about it. So... We can choose every single day to make intentional decisions to learn about what's going on in the world and to make choices that help people instead of hurt them. The choice is yours. It always has been. What will you choose? Hope you got something out of today's video. I will see you soon. But until then, I hope you have an amazing day.